start in the front here with Steve. I have right, two questions. Hi, how are you doing? Good. I want to talk to you first about Michael Jose. Uh, what he's giving you in special teams, he obviously had a block in the last game, and also what he does in the classroom. We got his first catch last week. It was great to see. Uh, and he had a blocked punt this week that was only a touchdown. Great to see. Uh, he's consistently been our um, second year, second year in a row, our smartest player on the team uh, in terms of great point average. He's already graduated in mechanical engineering, and he's on track to do uh, his masters in one year instead of the normal two. So he's cutting that in half. He's, uh, he's really good at figuring things out. Uh, as you would expect from a mechanical engineer, uh, great, uh, great teammate. Really happy uh, you know, for his on-field success now as well. And then also Eric Magnuson, if you could assess his play through three games and also the spirit that he brings to your team. Yeah, Mag's uh, good in both those regards. Uh, uh, has long brought a lot to, lot to our team. He's uh, probably been our most consistent. Pass protector so far. Uh, <clears throat> uh, likeable guy. Everybody likes Max. You know, he's a good leader and a good good guy. You know, genuine, down to earth, good person. Stay in the front here on the left, uh, John. Coach, uh, two turnovers through the non-conference, only ten penalties. Can you assess the job that you feel like your team's done in those areas? Uh, in those two areas. Uh, have been have been good. You know, we're we're getting turnover margin has got to be on the plus side. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, we're on the plus there. And, uh, I think we're I think we're playing. And we had a few penalties uh, more this past week than we than we have had. So uh, I think we're playing like good legit uh, penalty free. For the most part, football. Coach, we'll go on to this right side here in the front there. See, I'll just give one more answer. That was that would have been the that would have been a perfect time to just say we've been good in those two areas. Elaborate. <laughs> 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 warmed up. Hope we get some credit for that. <laughs> Coach, uh, special teams. Uh, do you track deflections? Because your totals don't show some of the deflections you've done and. Also, if you could talk about how you maybe force teams to now do different game planning. I mean, the splits that Colorado had on that one punt was different. Um, how much of an asset special teams is becoming? Deflection, you talking deflection about play, you know, because if, if you get your hand on a punt and it goes 10 yards, it's not a block. I mean, you've had right, right, some right. of those. I mean, do you track those, like in practice or games? Is that a? I know we have three, three deflections, right? They, they don't count as blocks. Depending on predicated on whether it goes over the line of scrimmage or not. Uh, just special like teams, it's become. You can track everything else statistically. That seems like something to be, right. be a good thing to, to track. And then how special teams so far has become an asset, maybe other than a couple field goal attempts in the last game? Yeah, it's. Uh, you gotta, you got you to set out to win two out of the three phases in a football game. Offense, defense, and special teams be in the three phases. And, uh, and you'd like to win all three, but uh, you know, if you can win two out of the three, usually in a football contest, you'll win the game. Special teams have been contributing greatly. Uh, that was our, was our best unit this past game. Come back over to your left here, Coach Chris. Coach, what do you like about your defense after three games, and where do you still feel like you have to improve? Um, I'm just like like our defense um, in all regards. Uh, we've got hit hit by a few post patterns, uh, post corner, post move. Got us got us this past week. So um, just I mean the big plays we've given out some big plays, but uh, you know very pleased with how our defense is playing and the defense has you know, generated big plays, big hits, momentum. Momentum changing, uh, drive stops, and turnovers. Uh, and I think our defense is, is doing extremely well. I love watching them. I love watching them standing over there. And there's times I should be thinking about uh, what to do 
won the next series. But I like watching our guys play. I really, really watch uh, where you guys just run into the football and, and uh, where they're flying around and hitting. It's uh, a fun unit to watch. Coach in the front here, Mark. You've encouraged, obviously, always uh, two-way players, three-way players if possible. Um, and but Jabril, you had Murray Sick and different guys like that. But Jabril being a linebacker and a return man seems pretty unique. Over all your years, and there's a player. Have you seen someone kind of with that combination? I mean, that seems pretty unusual. <clears throat> I suppose. I mean, I I can't think of another player like Jabril that uh, I, I know there's another player that I've coached uh, like him. The unique thing is all the positions that we play. I mean, uh, if you start counting them, it would be safety, it would be corner, it would be nickel, it would be outside linebacker, it would be slot receiver, it would be wildcat quarterback, running back, uh, kick returner, punt returner, gunner, hold up. That's 11 or 12 right there. So, uh, and I know there's others he could do. And, do, do well, but those are those are all the things he's done already here for us. So, uh, and that being said, he's done them all well. And also, that being said, there's others, that, there's other positions he would he could do and be good at. So, um, yeah, he's a, a special, special uh, type of athlete, special type of football player. And uh, we're really happy, happy for his success this past game. I know he was he was our offensive. For our defensive player of the game, he was our special teams player of the game. Possibly that he was the Big Ten special teams player of the week and defensive player of the week. Deservedly so. Rare, special. Also on that first one, a chain was Shane was in the game and finally there was kind of the logic there so early to have him in, have Shane in there. Yeah, just. Um, <clears throat> I think people expected us maybe to, that we might rotate quarterbacks in the first game, but we didn't, or the second game. Uh, so I didn't think they'd be expecting it as much the third game. And I wanted to, uh, some, some things that Shane does well and some things that John O'Corn does well. We wanted to, wanted to highlight him and give him, give him a chance to, to do some of those things. And we, and we always had those options going forward, and it's good for Good for your opponent to know that you have those options going forward. Coach in the back center, Matt. I can think that all things are possible. Coach, how is preparing for a Big Ten opener any different, if at all? Is there a different type of energy, a different type of enthusiasm, a different type of feel at all when you prep for a conference opener? You know, the way we've, we've, we've looked at it, um, you know, we're going to have to be at our best every single week. We've. Uh, we assessed the schedule from the start of the schedule. Every opponent that we played was going to have to be treated with utmost respect. Uh, preparation was going to have to be precise uh, and locked in and, and focused to give ourselves the best chance to be successful in the football game. So that's what we treated game one, game two, game three, game four now. Uh, and then we're going to have to treat every team on our schedule uh, with that kind of respect. As a big game, as a championship game, uh, that's the way we're going about it. Every every game is a big game. Every game is a championship game on our schedule. Jim, back right, Mike. Uh, Grant, I hit on the pump block touchdown. He actually was about 35 yards down the field when that when that ball was blocked. He had to come back and get it. And then on Darbaugh's touchdown, he had two and a half blocks, maybe. Um, can you just talk about how important he's become? For this team, it seems like he's making a lot of big plays that maybe we don't see, but he's there doing that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it, which just comes to mind. I was at the, the wife's, <clears throat> Sarah, we had our uh, doctor's appointment this morning, and uh, our, our doctor, Deb Berman, was, uh, did the, the, the long appointment, the hour of ultrasound, and proud to report everything is hitting right down the middle of the strike zone. But she was uh, talking about that play, and she called it Slippery Watermelon, and uh, I thought that was really, really good, so I'm kind of still laughing at myself about about the way she, she phrased that. It, you know, the ball was loose, I mean, a lot of people had their hands on it, that uh, it was kind of the Slippery Watermelon, and by the time Grant got there, I mean, he was, it was still 
still loose, and he picked it up and, and put it in the end zone. And uh, if your special teams can score a touchdown for you, your uh, your defense can. That's, those are those are huge plays in a ball game, and we've gotten that a couple a couple different ball games now. So special teams scoring 14 points. They, special teams put up 14 points in that ball game. That was uh, it's outstanding. Yeah, really proud of our uh, our guys, players, and our coaches that are just doing a fantastic job with the, with the special teams, and we hope to count on that now weekly as a as a weapon. Now you're not going to get 14 points a game, or, but uh, you know, they're really really playing well in all you know the coverage units, the, uh, the return units, and uh, we've been kicking the ball really well. Uh, this game we're a little out of sync. Kicking the ball, but I think uh, we'll get that improved this week. Coach on your right, Nick. Uh, Jim, I saw you had Jordan warm up again Saturday. Was that a game time thing for you to hold him out, or was it was he close? Yeah, so, no, we, we knew he wouldn't be playing this uh, this past ball game, but hopefully he'll play this week. Is he? Is he? Jordan said you thought maybe he was a little frustrated last week, Jordan, because he, he just hasn't been any work so hard this offseason. Are you? Mm -hmm. What are you sensing from him? You know, we know he's a Level-headed kid, but mood-wise, how's he been through all this? Well, I, I, just personally, I've I, I found that um, that the only time football isn't fun. You know, if you don't win, and also if you're just not a hundred percent, you know, you get some, and it's not a. It's, if it's a broken leg, that's one thing. You know, a broken arm, and you know you're you're, you're you, you know just bad luck and you're out. But uh, you know when it's that that thing that. You know, it's just the nagging thing that uh, you're dealing with, and you know, it's not something easy. It's not, it's not broke, you know, but it's, it's, it's just as real. And, uh, but we're, he's doing a fantastic job. The, the, the guy's been a stud. Jordan's been a, been a real stud in his, you know, in everything that he's done, every, every preparation he's made in the off season, and everything that he's doing now. Put himself in a position to, to have success. It's all been A plus plus, and very hopefully this is this is a week that he can get back there out on the on the field and play. Reap some of the reap some of the rewards of all that hard work that he's put in. Coach, you're up in front of you, Adam. Jim, what what have you noticed chemistry wise between the offensive line and 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 Will and and, and even kind of going with Eric? With he, you know, a lot of experience, he seems, you know, to know what he's doing, does a good job at it. What have you noticed that, that chemistry between those guys? I think it's been good. I think they work well together. <laughs> Sorry, not yeah. every answer. Is <laughs> I, I mean, anything specific? <laughs> anything specific? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, chemistry. So such, such a hard thing to define, really. I think it's an easier question to ask than it is to answer. Uh, I think they get along good. You know, I think. They, what, what would be the better way to ask that question? I, I think they, they get along good. You know, they uh, they do their jobs and they have they have mutual respect for each other. You know, the, it's good. It's about, is it good? Is it good to see a guy with such, you know, veteran leadership? Eric's fifth year guy, and it's kind of the lines I'm going on. Is what, what does he mean to the offensive line? How how much does he help? You know. The, that quarterback relationship, having an experienced guy like that? Uh, I think it's mutually beneficial for both. I mean, it's good that the quarterback, you know, a new starting quarterback has a veteran offensive line, and it's good for the uh, offensive line that they got a quarterback, though, that he hasn't had a lot of game experience, is, is more mature beyond his, uh, his experience. Coach in the back left here, Craig. Yeah. Um, we get Penn that one? I got it. Got Thank it. you. Got it. Uh, Penn State has changed to a uh, no huddle spread, and they're not completely dissimilar, I think, from Colorado and, and UCF. And uh, they don't option as much, I think. But I wonder if that puts extra pressure on your defense by having to change stuff up so that you can show somewhat different looks, or if you just execute the things you're trying to execute, and it doesn't much matter. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, those are those are real options for us to change things up, and uh, you, know, you like to you like to do that. You don't like to just go out and show the same same uh, 
alignment and assignments, techniques, uh, game after game after game. So you know, they can count on changes, uh, adjustments being made. That, uh, you know, it's a good system. That you know, the know how system is a very good system, uh, and you know it's got its it's got its pros and cons. But um, Penn State's offensive, they got a very good quarterback. They got a very good running back. Uh, you know, very good players. I think would be good and that are very good for that system. So uh, you know it's another challenge for us, and and why we have to, you know, why we treat every game like it's a championship game, every game like it's a like it's a big game because on our schedule is, uh, you know, comes in with a strong will to, to defeat us and a and uh, good coaching and, and good players. All right, we got time for two or three more. We can start on the right over there, Dan. A couple of your players last, last week mentioned that you would encourage them to be conscious at least of, of the rankings and the fact that they were at the top five and more expected to get hired. It's, it's probably different than a lot of head coaches' approaches. Is it one guy to ignore that type of thing? What's your philosophy on sort of encouraging to do that? Yeah, we're we're uh, we're trying to see how 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 we can climb, you know, how, how far we can go. We're striving to uh, striving to be the best. Dan, you left in the back here, Ryan. Hey, coach. Uh, you mentioned earlier showing them the Shane Morris package there right out of the gate. You said you like that, to let them know everything is on the table. Explain that philosophy as opposed to maybe the element of surprise to make them think a little bit more. Oh shoot, they might do anything on us. Is that kind of what you were going for there? As opposed to just throw something at them to make them think? I was very, I think it's pretty self, self-explanatory. I mean, it is the element of surprise. You know, when you put a different quarterback in the game, and yeah, I think it is a good thing to also let your opponent know that, that there's a lot of things that you know, that are options. And what else to say about it? We uh, they covered it. All right, last question up here. Can you make them think a little more. Does that make them think a little more in your eyes? I don't know. What? Well, why don't you think on that and, and uh, let me know. That's all I got. Last question up here, Angelique. Jim, you talked about you, know, you maybe you sort of enjoyed seeing Wilton work through that first uh, interception. What did you take from his performance Saturday where he you know, clearly had an elbow issue and, and yeah. how is the elbow and, and working through that for that whole game? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, impressive. I mean, he got hit. He got he got. Uh, he got hit hard, and uh, you know, we just we 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 missed the protection, uh, and uh, not him, but Weldon, one of the other guys missed the, missed their assignment, and and he took the brunt of it, you know. And they, uh, but you know, got up, and there wasn't uh, you know, there wasn't you know, any crying victim, you know. There wasn't any grabbing of body parts, you know. He uh, he walked it off like a like a tough guy, you know, and, and, and kept playing, never never said anything about coming out. I asked him after after the play how he felt. He said he was said he was uh, he was good and you know, trying to ride back out there. I mean like you know, like like tough guys do. Uh, and as, as it went through the game you could tell it wasn't a, he wasn't hundred percent, but you know, this isn't this isn't track. You know, this is football and Playing the quarterback position—that's that's that's part of the game. But I just um, thought he thought he showed a lot you know, to, uh, to his teammates, and I know uh, you know it's, it's just it's another run. You know, you, you grab, you know, and raise yourself up in respect in the eyes of others. And, you know, that was his opportunity to do it, and and he did. It. So. Uh, he goes up another row in our esteem. Do you have an update on Taco and Brian? Uh, no, getting better though. Getting better. You don't expect them to play this week? Could be, could be, could be graduating this week. For both of them. Back, back both out of the training room and then out of the field. Could be. We'll see. We'll hope. Um, again, you know, when we talk here on these Mondays, it's 
haven't seen them practice yet. All right. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Jeff.